The title is Under Construction, Reframing Men's Spirituality, and that probably describes the uh, book as well, although I call it, this is not the official uh, Herald Press tagline, but I call it a men's book for those men who don't read men's books by an author who didn't. Uh, so uh, uh, in a nutshell, though, it's, uh, it's attempting to provide, I suppose you could say in quotation marks, an alternative men's spirituality that seeks to uh, rely on biblical narrative uh, and uh, is based on uh, uh, pacifism and egalitarianism. Uh, and I think that makes it a bit unique. And those, the three things that I mentioned would be the problem that I'm responding to in that uh, I found that most books in the genre of men's literature were coming we're using ancient myths and modern movies more so than than uh, biblical uh, than the Bible, uh, in particular uh, a narrative approach to scripture. And uh, secondly, they tend to use uh, the warrior as the primary archetype, and as a pacifist, I find that somewhat uh, troubling, and wanted a more constructive uh, image to guide men's spirituality than than the warrior. Uh, as well, I wanted uh, a spirituality that is more communal uh, and uh, egalitarian. Uh, they, especially the evangelical books tend to focus on on male headship, and even secular and more more mainline Christian books tend to be quite individualistic, kind of focusing on men's self fulfillment. So I wanted it more communal and uh, and egalitarian. Uh, so that's how uh, kind of some of the the problems, as you, as you asked, uh, that I was responding to. I didn't set out to write a book. Uh, I set out on a personal quest. Uh, it, uh, hap it began with a sabbatical, and I had a number of more academic projects, and one of my personal projects uh, was to read uh, men's spirituality. I'd never really read much. I thought I need to give this a fair shake. It was part of maybe my midlife, midlife journey. And I started reading and journaling and uh, realized through conversation that a number of my friends and colleagues were experiencing similar kinds of restlessness and, and searching for uh, what does it mean to be a spiritual man. And so I gathered a group of friends together uh, and we met uh, once, uh, once a month, uh, and I, they agreed, the, the, the agreement was uh, we'd get together at a local pub once a month, and uh, I would send them stuff I was writing, and then we would talk about it. And uh, so that uh, is how it started, as a, as a personal uh, kind of friendship venture. Then, uh, in conversation, a number of other uh, uh, people I was talking to were interested, but of course I didn't want I wanted a table full, not more. And so uh, I started an electronic group as well. Uh, one of the people in my electronic group that, again, I sent stuff to and they would respond, uh, worked for Herald Press. And uh, he's, he said, I think this deserves a wider readership. And uh, somehow somebody from Mennonite Men got a hold of the manuscript. And to make a long story short, that's how uh, a book uh, came to be. Yes, I've published curriculum for Faith and Life before, uh, youth curriculum, and also had numerous uh, journal articles and that sort of thing, but my first kind of real book. Uh, very positively, uh, even here at the convention, I'm having a lot of men come up to me and say, uh, just kind of paraphrasing, uh, Thank you for telling my story. Uh, I've felt similarly that I just haven't felt affirmed as uh, a, a spiritual man. Uh, and other, some who have read other stuff and haven't found themselves, and others who have never read anything uh, and have uh, felt like I've articulated something for them that's been going on. Well, I hope to change the world. No. <laughs> um, that would be my grand uh, illusion. Uh, but I hope that it uh, helps, it affirms men who don't think of themselves as spiritual men. It affirms them, and I, and I see that as the, 
the role of pastors, teachers, writers to to articulate uh, a person's spirituality. Every uh, everybody, uh, especially if we, uh, I think everybody, but let's, let's look specifically at people in Mennonite churches, where which is the primary target audience. Uh, everybody has a spiritual life, but a lot of people are not seen as spiritual people, uh, and men in particular. Uh, and so I hope to articulate spirituality for them and say, yeah, exactly, that's what's going on uh, in, inside me. Uh, I just hadn't been able to articulate it before. It's not like I'm giving new information or telling men how to be better Christian men. Uh, I think that's too often the approach and it just produces guilt. Uh, but rather, I'd like to affirm them for the way they are al already relating to God. That's how I define the fuzzy word spirituality, is relationship with God. You know, I think that um, pretty much covers it. The chapters are short, uh, which was, I think was important uh, to me and to the uh, editors as we, as we put it together. I also wanted some uh, visuals in the book. Uh, uh, to appeal to a lot of men don't read uh, and so I was hoping that uh, that it would have that also uh, I put in now when my group got together we didn't have discuss I didn't have discussion questions uh, but that's something that the editors again thought was important so there's discussion questions at the back that will help men if they need some guidance for for their own group of men getting together but the, the most important thing I always say is just, it doesn't matter what you do when you get together, it's just important that men get together to talk about uh, who they are. Yeah, well, I think it's, it's, a, it's a whatever. Uh, the important principle is just that they're doing it and, and beginning to talk about their spiritual lives.